the miracle of the five loaves and two fish. After some time, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, also known as the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd followed him. Drawn by his miracles of healing the sick, the people pursued him, hoping to see more signs. This crowd's pursuit demonstrates not just curiosity, but deep hope for a Messiah who could deliver them, both spiritually and physically. Jesus ascended a mountainside, seeking a moment of relief with his disciples. It was near the time of the Jewish Passover festival, a feast that commemorated Israel's deliverance from Egypt. This detail is not incidental. Many believe that John deliberately sets this miracle in the context of Passover to evoke imagery of God's past provision, particularly the manna from heaven in the wilderness. As Jesus sat down, he lifted his eyes and saw the great multitude approaching him. His heart stirred with compassion for their needs, both physical and spiritual. Jesus turned to Philip and asked, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? Notably, Jesus asked Philip, as Philip was from the nearby town of Bethsaida. Perhaps Jesus intended for Philip to be tested in his faith and reliance on God's provision rather than local resources. John, the gospel writer, adds an important aside. He asked this only to test him, for he already knew what he was going to do. This test was not for Jesus' benefit, but for Philip's. The question Jesus posed was one of faith rather than logistics. Philip, however, responded in practical human terms, saying, it would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. His response reflected the enormity of the task in human terms, a theme common in John's gospel, people often seeing the natural world while missing the supernatural potential that Jesus brings. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, then spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Andrew's comment shows a glimmer of hope yet is still tinged with doubt. Barley loaves were the bread of the poor, signaling that the boy's offering was meager and insufficient by human standards. The significance of the barley loaves draws parallels to the story of Elisha, who fed 100 men with 20 loaves of barley in 2 Kings 4 verses 42 to 44. Elisha's miracle prefigures the greater work of Christ, who would soon feed 5,000 with even less. Jesus, undeterred by the limitations of the disciples or the small offering, instructed, have the people sit down. The mention that there was plenty of grass in that place might seem like a minor detail, but it points to the abundance of the setting, an echo of Psalm 23, where the good shepherd leads his flock to lie down in green pastures. John's gospel, often rich with theological symbolism, may be invoking Jesus as the good shepherd, providing for his people. The 5,000 men sat down, not including women and children. Jesus then took the loaves, and after giving thanks, a standard Jewish blessing of gratitude to God, he began to distribute them. Here, Jesus' role is significant. He is not simply a prophet. He is the one providing the bread, symbolizing both his role as sustainer of life and a foreshadowing of the true bread of life discourse later in this same chapter, John 6 verse 35. As he broke the loaves and the fish, a miracle unfolded. The food multiplied in his hands, and the people ate as much as they wanted. Some experts of the Bible note the contrast between this miracle and the typical experience of first-century peasants, for whom scarcity was a daily reality. Here, Jesus provides not only for necessity, but also for abundance, an image of God's overflowing grace. When the people had eaten their fill, Jesus instructed his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. This command reflects Jesus' awareness of the value of all things, even the remnants of a miracle. The 12 baskets filled with leftover bread are often interpreted symbolically, representing the 12 tribes of Israel. Some suggest that this signifies God's provision for all of Israel, and by extension, 
for the whole world through Christ. The crowd, witnessing this miraculous sign, began to murmur among themselves. They exclaimed, Surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. This statement reflects their understanding of Jesus as the promised prophet like Moses, as foretold in Deuteronomy 18 verse 15. However, many point out that while the crowd recognized Jesus as a prophet, they had yet to fully understand his true identity as the Son of God. They saw the signs, but their comprehension was still rooted in earthly expectations of political deliverance rather than the eternal salvation Jesus came to offer. Thus, through this miracle, Jesus not only provided for the physical needs of the people but also pointed them toward a greater truth, the coming of God's kingdom and his role as the bread of life, who would satisfy the deepest hunger of the human soul.